Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle. Today I want to talk about the things nobody tells you about going gluten-free. So I have a list of, let's see, six things to tell you. Number one, what nobody tells you about going gluten-free, the stomach issues. Now, to catch you up if you're new here, we are gluten-free family. My four-year-old has celiac disease, so we are gluten-free for medical reasons. We are not fad dieting. We're not trying it out. We are 100% gluten-free because if we're not, my daughter gets violently sick. So number one, stomach issues. So when we went gluten-free, my, my daughter's stomach issues went away. She doesn't have any issues eating gluten-free. My seven-year-old, when we went gluten-free, does not have any issues with switching to gluten-free food. My husband and I are different. I am in my mid-30s and so is he. And since going gluten-free, it's difficult um, stomach-wise. It, the beginning, it's, it can lead to diarrhea a lot. It's a definite change. We went cold turkey. We went straight from eating normal wheat products to cold turkey, no gluten in the house. Um, and there was many months there where our stomachs just weren't happy making the change. And I remember Googling it, looking up, you know, what happens when you're not celiac and you go gluten-free. Your body takes a while to adjust. Your stomach can hurt, you can get some stomach cramps. Even now, my husband can't eat more than two gluten-free products, baking products, so like if he ate a sandwich and a granola bar that was gluten-free, if he eats anything more that's gluten-free than that, he will get stomach pain and most likely diarrhea. Same with me, I can't tolerate more than three gluten-free baked items or my stomach gets upset. And we are nine months into being gluten-free. So I think that's something that needs to be talked about, that if you are not in fact celiac disease and you go gluten-free, there will be a change in your body and it's not always the best. I would say nine months in, my body has adapted. I can handle gluten-free products fine without any stomach issues, um, but it took some time. And the same thing when we had gluten-free Thanksgiving. Our guests, some of them had some stomach issues because everything we served was gluten-free. And if you're not used to eating that way, it can be disruptive to your digestive system. It also causes horrendous gas sometimes, not all the time, but the gas, it's pretty serious. Like it will make people leave a room, it's that bad. And again, if you're celiac, you don't have this problem. You don't have gas. My seven-year-old doesn't have gas. But for some reason, if you're in your mid-30s and spent your entire life eating wheat, you get horrible gas from it. And I look, look this up too, and it's because of the ingredients and gluten-free stuff. Obviously, gluten is the stuff that binds things together. So when you remove that, they have to put other things in there. So something like xanum gum. The problem with things like that is they can cause more fermentation in your stomach when you digest it. So it's causing a lot of more natural gas, which isn't you know, a bad thing, but it can make you fart a lot and it can be pretty potent. So be aware of that. And if your guests come over and you're serving them gluten-free food, I just give them a fair warning that you're going to consume this. You might get some bad gas. We understand. So that was number one. Number two is cost. I assumed there'd be a larger cost going gluten-free, but wow, my grocery budget has doubled. So for example, a loaf of bread, gluten-free bread, not even a full loaf, it's like three quarters of a loaf and it's tiny bread because guess what? Gluten-free bread doesn't rise very high because it doesn't have gluten. It costs like $5.19 at my grocery store for like a three quarter mini loaf of bread. So take that into consideration um, flour is more expensive, obviously, because it has to ensure that the places that these are being manufactured are free of gluten-containing ingredients. So I understand the up in price, but be aware, you're going to pay more. Number three is taste. Uh, there's a definite taste. There are some products that I can't really tell the difference. The gluten-free banana bread I make, not a big difference. Some of the uh, bakery items from Katz. K-A-T-Z, can't really notice a big difference. But most bread, you will notice a difference. It's very dense, it's very, kind of dissolves in your mouth. You definitely have to pick and choose which works for you because there's a whole array of textures when it comes to gluten-free bread. And if you've spent the majority of your life eating 
wheat-based products, yeah, there's a difference. You can tell a difference. My three-year-old, when she was three when she was diagnosed, she's four now. She can't really tell a big difference because she's young. My seven-year-old knows the difference. Gluten-free mac and cheese, completely different. The, the noodles are very different. Um, they can be either very mushy or very hard. And I find with bakery goods, it's usually dry and crumbly. There are some good products out there, but you got to find them. So taste is a big thing. It's going to be different. You're going to know the difference. Number four is cross-contamination. So this is a bigger issue than I think is addressed. I remember asking when we met with a dietitian, because after my daughter was diagnosed, they say, hey, set up an appointment with her. She'll explain things to you, which just pretty much included a bunch of pamphlets and go figure it out yourself. That's why I'm making this video. So cross-contamination is when gluten comes in contact with something else. So if I'm making a sandwich and I touch the bread and then I go and touch the fridge door and my daughter touches that fridge door and then touches her mouth or eats food, she's putting gluten in her body. It's very hard to get gluten off things. You can wash it like off a fridge door, but it gets stuck in things like plastic. If there's a scratch, it can be in um, frying pans. So like muffin tins, things like that waffle makers, those types of things. And it's very hard to get them out. And most of the time you have to replace those items, which I think is another part. You have to replace a lot of items when you go 100% gluten-free. It's different for just dieting or a fad diet or whatever you're doing. But if you're doing it for medical reasons, it's different. You have to get rid of um, some appliances. Like our, we had to get rid of the toaster. We had to get rid of the waffle maker because there's no way to get the gluten out of them. Same with restaurants. Just because something's labeled gluten-free at a menu, because um, like I said, gluten-free is a lot more trendy right now. It's popular, which has its good and bad parts, such as a lot of restaurants offer a gluten-free option. But that does not mean their kitchen is taking the proper precautions to ensure there's no cross-contamination. They may be boiling your gluten-free pasta in a pan. They just boiled regular wheat pasta in. They might be putting um, flour in your eggs or to, you know, fluff them up. Like it can be in different things. So just because it says gluten-free doesn't necessarily mean it is gluten-free. Especially at a restaurant, you need to ask the questions, how is this prepared? Are there separate utensils being used? Things like that. So cross-contamination is gonna be one of your biggest hurdles with going gluten-free. And the, la let's see, number five, I lost track already, um, would be misinformation. There's a lot of misinformation and a lot of people just don't know about it. It's often mistaken as, celiac disease is often mistaken um, as a food allergy and it's not, it's an autoimmune disease, there's a difference. It's kind of lumped in there with food allergies. For example, the top eight allergies, um, Gluten is not one of them. Wheat is one of the top eight allergies. And this goes back to just because it says wheat free on something does not mean it's gluten free. There's a difference. So gluten is not one of the top eight allergies. It's not required to be on a product or a package, but wheat is. So a product might say, oh, this is wheat free, but do not assume it's gluten free because gluten also contains barley and rye, not just wheat. Three things, three things, barley, rye, and wheat. So you might have well-meaning relatives or friends that say, oh, this is wheat-free, your child can have it. No, misinformation. Uh, let's see, a lot of people think, oh, it's, it's just, you can just have a little bit and you'll be okay. It literally takes a crumb to make your immune system freak out and attack itself. So you can't just uh, tolerate a little. I've heard, oh, maybe she'll outgrow it. You can't outgrow it. It's a lifelong genetic condition. She will not outgrow it. It is not a food allergy. <sighs> Cross-contamination already hinted at. People will be nice and said, oh, I, I made this with gluten-free flour. But their kitchen may not be uh, gluten-free. They might have used utensils that had come in contact with gluten. Again, well-meaning people trying to be nice, but they're just not informed about how far you have to go to really be gluten-free. Uh, and some people think, oh, you, you eat a little gluten, you get a stomach ache. No, you don't. My daughter will be violently ill for days. It will affect her completely. 
It's not just a tummy ache. It's not just running to the bathroom. Her behavior changes. She becomes a completely different person. It's, it's more than just little tummy problems. It's serious. All right, number six is gluten can be in pretty much everything. So some of the weirdest places I have found gluten is soap. It can be in hand soap, shampoo, body wash, all those things. And why is that important? It's not like you're eating the soap. Well, some people with celiac disease don't do well with it even touching their skin. But also when you have young children who constantly are putting fingers in their hand or fingers in their mouth, that can be an issue. So if they're washing their hands with gluten for, or soap that has gluten in it and then they're putting the fingers in their mouth, they're ingesting gluten. Uh, cosmetics, think chapstick or lipstick. These are things that you're going to be ingesting. So you have to be careful with your cosmetics. Art supplies, obviously Play-Doh has gluten in it. They do make gluten-free Play-Doh, you can find it on Amazon, but art supplies like that think finger paints and some kind of air dry clay. Some of those can have gluten in them, so be aware of that. Medications, vitamins, supplements, those can have gluten containing ingredients as well. Coffee, think uh, flavored coffees, K-cups or ground coffee, those can have gluten containing ingredients depending on what's, how they're made and where they're made. So those are some of the random places that gluten can be, so you need to be aware. Yeah, so those are the things that nobody tells you when you go gluten-free. And that's just the last nine months, so I might have more, I don't know. But I hope this helped you guys. Thanks for tuning in.